Hey Team Electronics, welcome to your screencast. It's an introduction to motors. So starting probably on Thursday, we are gonna set up some circuits um, with simple DC motors and get them going. Okay, so what is a motor? Uh, it's something that spins when you apply a current. Um, so here's a motor, here's a simple DC motor. If we apply a current, then we get spin. If we hook up the motor such that this is hooked up to 5 volts and this is hooked up to ground, the motor is going to spin clockwise. If we flip the polarity of the attachment, so now we've hooked up the 5 volt, which we should never do, you know, because of keeping track of what's going on where. But if we use the um, black lead for 5 volts and the red for ground, then what's going to happen is the motor is going to switch its direction of rotation. You can play around with this in class. Um, the, uh, not probably not tomorrow, but on Thursday as well. So now it's going to run counterclockwise. So the direction of the spin is dependent on the direction that the current is running. If you run it one way, it will spin clockwise, and if you run it the other way, it will spin counterclockwise. Um, okay, the motor is also a generator. This is pretty cool. If you apply a spin, then you are going to get a current. Well, what do I mean by this? Um, here, you're applying a current. There's a potential difference from this lead to this lead, um, this jumper wire to this jumper wire, and the motor spins. However, if you just hold on to the motor, um, this little toggle right here, and spin it manually um, with your fingers, boop, um, then you are going to create a current. If you spin it this way, uh, then you're going to get five. The high side will be here, and ground will be here. And if you spin it the other way, the opposite will be true. Five volts here and ground here. So spinning the motor creates a current. Uh, applying a current creates a spin. So they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, it's actually pretty cool if you hook this up to the 5 volt and ground of your Arduino and then you spin the motor um, uh, with your fingers, you can get the Arduino to light up. You'll see the on button turn on. So you can experiment with that as well in class on Thursday. Um, how does a motor actually spin? Well, there's a relationship that we're not really going to get into today between electricity and magnetism. And you can set up a very simple motor if you're interested. Um, I've linked this to Schoology. Um, click on this link or just type in DIY simple motor and you can see how with a permanent magnet, a tiny little solenoid, which is just a coil of wire and battery, you can create a little spinning motor. Um, what happens is that the permanent magnet always has a magnetic field that's pointing up and the solenoid, when an electric current runs through it, um, also creates a magnetic field. When these two mag magnetic fields oppose each other, I'm sure you've all played with magnets before and you bring two north sides facing each other, they will oppose each other. And so this applies a force on the solenoid and it will spin. So you can generate some rotational motion. Um, uh, if you're interested, I can help you set one of these up. They're very satisfying and fun. You just start them spinning and then they just continue to spin until the battery runs out of battery. Very cool. So a, a similar but slightly more complicated setup is happening within your little DC motors. They have coils of wires and permanent magnets and the opposition of forces um, within this uh, structure, this housing, is going to create a spin. Um, okay, so in class on Friday, we're going to set up a circuit that is, looks much more complicated than just
plugging it into power and ground. And the reason for this is we want to control um, roughly the speed of the DC motor, um, and we're going to do so using a component called a transistor. A transistor is like a tiny little um, a tiny little electrical switch. Uh, you've all, I'm sure, turned lights on and off before. This is a physical switch, so when you move the switch state from high to low, what you're doing is actually closing the circuit um, between uh, the, the two pins inside of the housing of the switch. So it's a physical connection. A transistor is like a switch, but it is electrically stimulated rather than physically stimulated. Uh, e L E C T R. Um, and what do I mean by that? So a transistor always has um, three pins: uh, the collector, the uh, base, and the emitter. Um, the collector and the emitter are when uh, are not connected. Unless you have a voltage applied on the base. So when you apply a voltage, to the base, this creates electrical connection between collector and emitter. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's all you need to know. Uh, oh, I guess I should say that, um, the collector should be on the 5 volt side of your design and the emitter should be on the ground um, side of your design. And then the base is hooked up to the Arduino. So if you see here, we have a transistor, um, we have uh, the emitter is here, the collector is here, and then here is the base, which is hooked up to the Arduino. So the only way we'll get a complete circuit between the power and the ground is when we apply a voltage to this middle pin. So we can turn on and off the circuit um, by applying a voltage here or not. Um, okay, so... That is what a transistor does. It's like a tiny little switch that is electrically controlled. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. A capacitor is this next thing. It's, it's called a capacitor. Thanks, Gwen. Um, A capacitor is kind of like a tiny battery. Um, it can charge up or discharge quickly. And the DC motor is a device that actually requires a substantial amount of current. Um, and as a result, uh, it can um, create a pretty large fluctuation. So when you turn it on, um, it requires a lot of current pretty quickly. Uh, the capacitor can help smooth out the current, meaning it can supply, or the voltage, it can supply current when there's demand for current, and then it will recharge when the demand subsides. So it's like a electrical piece that can um, smooth out the, uh, the, the, uh, what do I want to say? Smooth out the... 
the way that your components interface in your circuit. So they're not working jerkily. They just work very smoothly. Without the capacitor, um, it's going to be hard to bring this guy up to speed um, quickly because this can provide the extra juice when we need it. Um, okay, the last thing in our design, the new thing, is called a diode. Um, you've seen this word before when we've talked about light-emitting diodes, or LEDs. Um, a diode is something that only allows the current to flow in one direction. Um, the, you can tell uh, which way it's allowing the current to flow because the cathode, the side that's connected to ground, will always have a little stripe next to it. Um, so current can only flow in one direction through this device. And in our design right here, this is a protective diode. Remember how we said that the motor can be a motor, but it can also be a generator? So if you turn on your motor and you allow it to spin um, by providing a current, and then you take away the current, um, and you want it, it will keep on spinning for a little bit because it has um, uh, it has inertia. It's going to take it a little while to come to a stop. While it's spinning, it will generate a current. And that current that it generates could flow back into your Arduino and damage components in your Arduino. Having a diode in your design only allowing current to flow in one direction, um, in this case, the direction that the current is flowing is Oh, it's going to be prevented from flowing back out this way. Um, we can make sure that we're not damaging any components in our circuit. Okay, so here are the new components. We've got motors, DC motor, which can also act as a generator. We have a transistor, which is like a tiny little electrical switch. We can turn, we can control the connection between the collector and the emitter by either applying a current, which will connect them, or not applying a current to the base, which will leave them unconnected. Um, and we have a capacitor, which smooths out the delivery of voltage to all of our components in our circuit. It's kind of like a tiny little battery that can charge and discharge very quickly. And then we have a diode, which is, in this design, a protective diode, preventing the backflow of potential current um, created by our motor from flowing back into our Arduino and damaging um, potentially sensitive electronic equipment here. Um, and then we have a 9-volt battery, which you've seen before. And that's all. We're going to be setting this up and running this code and figuring out what it does. Uh, but just looking at it, I'm sure you can figure out pretty quickly what's happening here. Um, and that's all.